It's a beautiful morning here. It's just seven o'clock in the morning in late June here in Vermont. And today is a very exciting day for us. Last night, our contractor came out and we began to stake out some of the buildings on the property here because today the excavator will be here and they will be starting the work to do the rough grading. We've still got a few more stakes to lay out and we've got a laser here. Last night we were using our contractor's rotary laser. We don't have a rotary laser, we have a line laser. It's not quite as bright, but with this receiver, we're hoping we'll be able to get some of the distances that we need. Failing that, the contract will be here soon with the rotary if we need that. The goal today is to really get things rough graded. We've got three buildings that we're trying to lay out on the site here. The main house, the utility building, and a barn. We have the distances on, on those from the boundary wall, so we can see exactly where things should be. So the goal is to get everything laid out, so that the work can begin to actually start getting the level, getting everything to the height that it needs to be. And that's really important here because there's actually a lot of height change. If you look behind me, it may not look really steep, but there's actually about almost 10 to, well, about 10 to 15 feet of elevation change between where we're standing right now and where the top of the buildings will be up there. And so we need to make sure that we don't build it, the buildings on a slope. We need to make sure the slopes are in the right places. So today we're going to be making sure that we have flat sections where we need flat sections and the elevation change where we have the elevation change. So the DeWalt laser that we're using shoots a plane to a line all the way around 360 degrees in all three dimensions at once if you want it to. All of our measurements that we've got, we've taken along this wall, which is straight and then perpendicular out from it. Before we can start doing actual grading work, actually these trees, they are kind of between the wall and the utility building. They also need to go out, stumps need to be taken out, and the topsoil needs to be removed. Let me give a bit of an update on what we're doing and some of the challenges that we're running into. So up behind me in the distance, you can probably see the excavator. Austin, who is working the excavator, is still trying to remove a lot of the topsoil and clear the area, particularly where we uh, cleared the trees earlier today. Once he's done that, we'll have the whole site pretty much stripped of all the topsoil so that the exposed ground underneath the subsoil, and in some cases the bedrock, the ledge, is visible. And that ledge is one of the challenges we're running into. It may be a little hard to tell from here, but as you look up there, we're on a slope. When you stand on our driveway, which is just here next to me, and you look up towards where the excavator is, it looks like the bottom of those trees up there are roughly about eye level with where we are down here. Everyone that's tried it so far all comes to about the same conclusion. That area up there is about six feet higher than down here. Last night for the first time, we were able to put a laser on that and take some real readings, and it is not six foot. The actual height difference between down here on the driveway and up there is about 13 feet. And I'm standing a couple of feet below that right now, so it's about 15 feet height change all the way up there. And that's a problem because we're trying to build a building and buildings really want to be on a flat surface. So one of the things that we are working on at the moment is to try and understand how do we get a sloping piece of land and turn it into a flat building site. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. It's going to depend a lot on your area and what's normal there, the type of buildings you've got and everything else. We've been working with our engineer, our builder here, our contractor who's doing the excavation site work and several others whose opinions we've been seeking. And we've come to a couple of ideas that we think might be able to work. In essence, the two options we have are cut down the high bit, so dig down deeper and deeper until that is flat, or raise up the low bits until they're the same height as the high bits, and then it's flat that way. 
Let's start with that second idea. If we add fill material to the low parts to bring them up, what does that mean? Well, adding fill over here will bring the, the, the building area, so where we want to put the building is kind of up towards where the, uh, the corner of the cleared section is there. So if we added some fill material a little bit lower down to bring that area at the, the front up the same height as the back, well, then it's nice and flat to build on, but how do we transition from down here to up there? We've got to have a driveway that can reach up there. We can't just suddenly magic a 13 foot seat height change and expect a driveway to follow that. So that becomes a little bit tricky. What about the other option, digging down at the top? Well, in a little while, that's what the excavator is going to be doing. They're going to be digging down, seeing how deep they can get there. And I do mean seeing how deep they can get because we are contending with bedrock ledge on our property here. You may be able to see some of the areas behind me have got some exposed bedrock, and that is a reality of this property. And honestly, this whole area is, is infamous for having really shallow bedrock. Here in our property, we've struggled to find many areas where we've got more than two feet of soil before hitting something rocky. So far, that rock appears to be crumbling and coming apart really nicely, and the excavator is able to pull it out in big slabs and big chunks. If that continues, then this looks like it could be a good option to dig down into, into the rock there. But digging down 13 feet, and in fact more than that, because we need then the depth of a concrete slab and insulation underneath, digging down 13 plus feet, that is a very, very deep hole. So instead, what we're gonna try and do is split the difference. We're going to add a little bit of fill material to the low spots and cut down a little bit in the high spots and see if we can land in a balance that's about between the two. That way we don't have to have too steep a driveway and we don't have to dig in too deep at the back to pull that level down. That sounds good in theory, but in practice, asking someone with an excavator to dig down a little bit or add some fill material here isn't really very specific. What we need is very, very precise heights. So one of the things that Dino and I are working on right now is to try and get some exact levels using the laser. Now we've been around and mapped out various areas so we know roughly what we're dealing with, but now it's time to start putting some hard numbers on to sort of try these things out in the real world and see what it looks like at different heights. There are various ways you can do this using a laser. The way that we've chosen to do this is to use a reference marker. So a reference marker is a point in space that is going to be our absolute zero. All other elevations will be referenced from this point. And what we needed was a spot that definitely wasn't going to get impacted, somewhere that was not gonna get hit by the excavator, that wasn't gonna have its grade changed and would be really safe. As you can see, all along the wall, all up there near the excavator, that whole area is being torn up. If we put a reference marker anywhere up there, then there is a good chance it's going to get torn out. So we have to think, what is the safest possible place we have to put something? And the answer is next to Diana's raised garden. Because if anyone messes with his garden, we have problems on our hands. So I, I've been joking the excavator, you can take out any tree here, you can take out anything you like, but do not touch Diana's pail. Like, bad things will happen if you touch the kale. So what I've done is I've put a reference marker just here. And this stick here, uh, we've put some yellow tape on it just to indicate it so it's, it's a bit more visible. This is going to become our ground zero, quite literally. This marker here is going to represent an elevation of zero feet. Every other reference point we then take will be measured off this point as plus two feet or plus four feet or whatever. And as I say, there's different ways to do this. This is the way that we've chosen to do it. It's easier given the lay of our land and the tools that we have available. So now it's time to start laying some things out. It's the end of the day now, and today has been a pretty incredible day. We're exhausted. It's been tiring both physically and mentally. While we've been running around with the grade stick and the laser, setting stakes and getting levels and really mapping out the site, Austin in the excavator has been working phenomenally, digging out a load of the rock that you see behind me. So I said earlier on that one of the things we have to contend with on this property is the bedrock, the ledge. It sits pretty close to the surface 
and it's pretty veiny. It's uh, it's some places it's really shallow. It's almost on the surface. Other places it dips down into pockets of, of soil. Austin has been digging away at that in the excavator, and as you can see behind me, it has been making insane progress. Some of the rocks that have come out of here, they're absolutely huge. Let me show you this one here. This whole thing came out as one giant rock. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's absolutely massive. So we've got a ton of these rocks now, and he's been trying to like sort these into piles of really big square rocks that we could use if we want like a big rock wall. Maybe if we do put a retaining wall or something further back, we can use those. Then a pile of the subsoil. So this is pretty sandy, fluffy kind of stuff. Um, but that's the layer under the topsoil. And then last, a pile over here of smaller rocks that are still pretty significant. These are like at least a couple of hundred pounds each. But again, really nice. They've splintered out really nicely. And that's really good for us because one of our big concerns was that the rock was going to be blasting or they would need the big rock hammer on their big 32 ton excavator to get that thing in here to really kind of chisel through that rock. As it turns out, so far at least, that doesn't look like it's going to be necessary. That hole back there is within about a foot or so of where we want it to be for the top of concrete, the, the kind of the final grade of the concrete slab. So we do need to go down further than that to actually install the, the slab and the, the crushed rock and the insulation things underneath. But so far, that hole is actually coming out pretty nice and all the rock is peeling away with just the excavator and the bucket. Fingers crossed, we are able to continue that all the way across up there because as he was doing that, Diana and I were getting grades using the, the laser level and really getting a lay of the land. It's our first time doing it. We are not experts in this, but we have modeled our way through and we have been able to get very accurate heights at each of the current locations of the corners of the buildings. I will say the Dewalt laser that we're using has been working really well. It is their three plane, I guess you'd call it, 360 degree laser and that was really cool because we could shoot a line straight up and down this wall directly parallel to it kind of on top of the wall and then shoot perpendicular out to get all our measurements out into the field it also lets us put a, a kind of a, a corner of that that square onto a building and shoot the walls of where the building will be if the excavator was in the way of the wall and we needed to work out on our own so that was really cool using that we discovered just how much height change we have across the property but because of how much progress Austin's been able to make up there digging that hole it actually doesn't look like that's going to be an issue and the plan at the moment we're thinking is to raise the driveway up another couple of feet or so which we can easily do because it's it's fairly flat there at the moment and so another couple of feet at the top shouldn't be an issue at all from there follow that grade up to the front of what would become the barn alongside obviously the barn inside is going to be flat alongside the barn we can handle a little bit of a gradient but we don't want it to be too steep because we've got to drive up there and and we just don't want this giant steep cliff to climb up along the side of the building however it looks like we're only going to need probably less than a foot of fill at the back side of the barn to bring up what will become the rv pad to the same level as the utility building because of how much he's been able to dig down there so far. So, great progress, but there are a couple of challenges we're running into. One is, what do we do with all this material we're pulling out? We are gonna be digging down more than we're filling in. So it's not like we can reuse everything we've got as fill because we just haven't got space. And honestly, a lot of it isn't the right material to use as fill, especially to then build on top of. You've gotta use a proper engineered kind of um, crushed rock, it's going to be compacted and things the right way. So the first thing is, what are we going to do with all of this rock, all of this subsoil that's been coming out, and of course, the giant topsoil mountain over there. What are we going to do with all of this? At the moment, it's a bit of a game of shuffle, just moving things around, and it's not ideal. So we're trying to find some areas that we can use to store this rock, so that if we do want to do a wall in future, we can, and make sure other things are out of the way as we grade. The second thing is, there is yet more cleanup. So we did manage to uh, buck a few logs off the bottom of the trees we felled. But once again, we've got more stumps and more treetops and slash piles to deal with. So I think the next few days for us are going to be clearing up a lot of this mess. We are in the week just coming up to the 4th of July weekend. So it is going to be a long weekend anyway. They've got a couple of other jobs on, uh, the, the guys, the excavators. So we've got a few days 
to kind of get things cleared up, get things ready, get some grade stakes out, get all the levels decided upon, so that when they come back, hopefully towards the end of next week, we'll have everything ready to go so they can start digging down, getting to the right grades, and hopefully soon after that, bring in any fill that we need to bring everything up to the, the final grade. That's going to be super exciting. But I tell you, standing here now, it is a lot of work that we've got ahead of us. We've never done this before. And there's a lot of decisions. There's a lot of stuff you have to kind of work out and think through and, and visualize. And that's really hard work. We feel really happy with where things are at. And we are really excited with the way this project is going. So if you're also enjoying this, then please make sure to subscribe. And we will see you in the next video.